I won't lie to you. Subbing is not always sunshine and rainbows. There will be days when you walk out of the classroom and are ready to make a vow to never return. However, in my experience, there have been no more bad days in subbing than I had in any other job. Unfortunately, subbing is a job that is easy to quit, and since the job has such a poor reputation, none of your friends will ever blame you if you do. But you can do it. You can make it through the bad days, and as you get more experience, those bad days will be farther and farther apart. In this section, we will talk about some of the difficulties of being a sub, so that you go in fully prepared. For some of us, finding a job as a sub is as easy as throwing a rock. If you live near a large school district, then most likely they will be hurting for subs, and finding a job will not be a problem. If you live in a small community with only one or two schools within driving distance, getting hired on as a sub may be difficult, and even if you do, you might go weeks between assignments. If you're just looking to grab a little extra cash from time to time, then it is no big deal. But if you're looking for something a bit more lucrative, then subbing in a small community may be an uphill battle. Remember how we talked about all that time off you would get as a sub? Well, all that time off comes with a price, and that price is that you don't get paid. Subs are not salaried employees. You get paid for the days you work. When school is out, you get nothing. Even when school is in, there are slow periods such as the first and last few weeks of school and during standardized testing windows. You need to be prepared to go days, weeks, or even months with no sub income at all. In general, substitute teaching is a low-paying job. Larger school districts pay more, but they are often in areas with higher cost of living, so it doesn't do much good for you. Full-time classroom teachers struggle to make ends meet, and you will be getting paid less than they. As a second income, subbing is great. As a primary career to support a family, it is not the best option. Even the best subs in the world have bad days. There will be days when you have a classroom full of kids that will just not keep it together. It may be a sugared up kindergartners the day before holiday break, or it may be a study hall full of rowdy teenagers who love to push your buttons. There will be days when you want to give up. Just remember that tomorrow will be a whole new day. Even if all the cons we have discussed so far are ones you can live with or work around, there is still the simple fact that some people just do not enjoy working in the classroom environment. There is little structure, no one to hold your hand if things start going wrong, and a lot of responsibility is laid on your shoulders. Finally, teaching requires a very open mind. If you can't handle being around kids of different races, religions, cultures, or sexualities without accept accepting them for who they are and not trying to change them into something they are not, then subbing is not a good choice for you. Let me say it again because that last point cannot be stressed enough. A teacher's job is to provide education to all children. Free education is a right guaranteed by law to every child in the United States and pretty much every other country in the world. Public schools do not get to choose who walks in their doors and teachers do not get to choose who to teach. Your personal views on the background or personal lifestyle choices of a child or their family are irrelevant. It may seem at this point that I'm trying to scare you off of being a substitute teacher. That is not the case at all. I just want to make sure that you fully understand what the job entails before you make a commitment. In the next section, I will share with you some situations that I ran into while subbing. I want you to spend some time thinking about how you would react in these situations so you will be prepared for them in the future.